Hey guys, it's PC Purrs and I'm back for another episode of A Dancer Reviews where a dancer is going to review a show or a music video, series, whatever that is about pole and we're going to talk about more than just the story. We're going to talk about how we're seeing pole in there. So today we're back for another episode of Jocelyn's Cabaret. This is episode five. It's crazy. Let's talk about it. This episode starts the way most of these episodes start with a fight. So it's a continuation of last week with K Capri and Wet Wet. And I I thought this fight was gonna go way different. Way different. But I just wanna say I wanna give the MVP award to Wet Wet because the odds were stacked against her. She was holding her own. She didn't let anybody take her down. She just I thought K Capri was gonna take it easy on her because she's small, but she was not trying to take it easy on her and Wet Wet was ready for it. Like she held her own. And then all of a sudden Black Diamond came out of nowhere and tried to hit her while she's already getting hit. And then Raven came and tried to get in the mix too. I'm like, oh, so we jumping people now? And Wet Wet is handling her own against all three of them. So she gets separated from them. And at this point they just have her out there. No wig. She just has, you know, the stocking cap installed in the front. Braze is exposed in the back. She's bleeding. She's got her breast out. She's just like, she's going through it. A good four girls is going at her at this point. And she's just like, everywhere she turns. I guess Jocelyn, I get a feeling she doesn't really like Wet Wet because she's just like listening to everybody that's talking about it. She's not saying, y'all yeah, can't jump her. She's just like, okay. And so then Wet Wet is screaming, I'm not going to let y'all jump me. Like, I want a one on one fight. And Kay Capri is still coming at her and she throws something at her, which I guess is a Red Bull can and hits her in the face. So now Kay Capri is really bad. And it's funny because what what kept screaming, how are y'all so bothered? And I'm just wondering the same thing too, because she's annoying. Okay, but somebody ain't taking money from my pockets and they not putting money in my pockets. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Go over there, scream, show your breasts, do whatever you want to do. You're not going to get me that bothered. Like... K Capri's over there screaming with security holding her. And I'm like, you that mad over somebody else? Like, you gave all your power to that girl because in a way I'd be that bothered over somebody I don't know. And it's funny because K Capri ran up on her first and then she got this little bruise on her face from the can. And then Black Diamond hurt her arm in the process. She realizes she can't feel part of her arm or she's in a lot of pain. And Jocelyn talks to her and Raven and she's like, well, you gotta go to the hospital. And she told Raven she could go with her. Raven didn't say she was gonna go though. <laughs> and she told her, you can't dance with a broken arm. Like, what you gonna do? And then she told them, you know, as far as their performance, that it wasn't good, but they went first so they didn't know what to do. But they said they don't know how to dance anyway, so I don't think they would have done anything different. But Okay, and Jocelyn is telling them, you know, we don't really like what, what we're going to get rid of her anyway. Then the story just gets crazier. <laughs> so Wet Wet is trying to put some clothes on, trying to gather herself. And she's in this room, and then who pops out? Who pops out? Crazy little guy in <laughs> pops out <laughs> from underneath the table. Talking about she's hiding there because her mom used to get beat and is, is taking her back. So it's like okay and she said how she can't handle it so what what is still you know trying to talk to her while she's putting her clothes on she's telling her you know well if you can't handle it then you know maybe the cabaret isn't for you then Gaia starts trying to tell her that she has a demon in her and starts trying to exercise her I'm like what is happening here she has a little pain bible she's literally trying to lay hands on this woman like Demon get out like she's going and the girl <laughs> went with it first is still like talking to her. She's like, listen, I don't need all that. Take it down to Kay Capri. She's crazy. Give it to her. And she just kept like trying. And Wet Wet is like, listen, take your hands off me because I'm going to fight you. But she must have forgot that this one is the wrestler. So <laughs> now she gets into another fight with... Gaia and Gaia again hits that crazy stance and just takes it down to the floor and just slams up. Security has to break them up. And when Jocelyn comes back, she's like, What happened to you? She's like, Yo, I got into another fight. She's like, I was gone for two minutes and you got into a fight. And she's like, Yes. And security, everybody's like, Yes, this girl came out of nowhere and tried to fight her. Meanwhile, Gaia's like, I'm pressing charges because she tried to fight me. It's like, Girl, you came after her. <laughs> 
And then guy is like, when she had slammed her, she was telling her, you know, demon, get out, leave my family alone, get away from my husband, my child, things like that. And then she's saying this dip. So then when she's by herself, she's saying, oh, this demon's been after me since I was a kid, since I was three, and I wasn't strong enough then, I'm strong enough now. I'm like... Does Zeus not screen these people because, yes, it's entertaining, but it's like, you got this one talking about this trauma, K. Capri is sitting there <sighs> just breathing, like screaming. I'm like, at some point, they seem a little unhinged. Like, they're really taking it there for a chance, but y'all ain't doing the work for the chance for the spot in the cabaret. Where's the dancing? Where's the y'all just fighting each other over nothing? If that wasn't enough, Gaia starts talking about the only other time she she exercised someone and it went successfully and it was a pimp and she got a demon out of him that she could see. That was the story. And then, um, and then she sits down and she prays for wet wet, but she's like, I guess if the exorcism doesn't work, then you just got to beat him up. I'm like, <laughs> I was trying to go for her last week, but this week I'm like, no, she got to go. <laughs> she got to go. She got too many things going on. And basically, I guess Jocelyn felt like that too, because guy got her stuff and she left. So Jocelyn starts having a meeting with all the rest of the girls. And wet wet is there. She's in the back and you got two sets of girls. And Wet Wet is just kind of hovering, kind of circling a little bit. And Jocelyn is not okay with the fact. She says she's okay with them throwing things at each other and fighting. But she's not okay with the girl hiding under the table. Make it make sense. And then Kay Capri is saying she's not okay. Like, is it okay if people throw things? Because she threw water and Wet Wet threw something hard. She threw the can at her. And Jocelyn is saying that that's not okay. But... You can't start a fight and then when people fight you back, tell them how to do it. Like, you pick that fight. So, also, you were way bigger than her. So, I'm sure she felt very threatened. Somebody that big comes after me, I'm throwing whatever I have in my hands too. Like, she's like, oh, you felt that threatened? Four people fought her that night. Kate Capri, Raven, Black Diamond, and Gaia. She got, she fought four people. And, you know, she has sat down in the episode and talked with production, somebody in production about her life and about all of the horrific things that she had been through and how that prepared her to be able to take four people. And I'm like, she had to have been through some stuff to be able to just take those people back to back to back to back. And, like, for the most part, she, she took the hits. Like, she was good. Like, she gave them back. Two of them people got hurt, Kay Capri and Black Diamond. And Gaia left. She slammed her, but... She still got a few hits in on her, and who's the other one she fought? Raven? I mean, as soon as Raven swung on her, she was down on the ground. She, I don't even know if her hits connected, so <sighs> that's why I'm giving her the MVP award for the night, because she shouldn't have won, but she came out swinging. She came out on top, as far as I'm concerned. She was good. She might have been bleeding a little bit, but she ate those. She ate those. So... When Kate Capri was talking about getting hit, well, I was like, yeah, she over there looking like Nelly with the stripe. And you know Nelly's been out here for his little recent thing. So that was just a funny little coincidence. But there was no dancing in this episode. But that's okay because we know that a few of these girls don't know how to dance. So if I were in the house and I knew that there were some girls that didn't know how to dance, but they need to start learning tricks or if they were going to be in the cabaret, whatever, I'm sure they're going to need to start building endurance, learning how to do things. And one of the first hurdles you're gonna need to master is how to climb, usually. So usually once you get that under your belt, you feel very accomplished. So today we're gonna talk about different types of climbs and how to execute a climb. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna talk about the parts of the body that are gonna come in contact with the pole. Ready? Okay, so the tops of the foot, both sides, Inside squishy part of the knee, right behind the bone, both sides. Then, of course, the hands. And we're going to talk about the forearms today. So, first things, arm placement. You want to have your arms up high. And then your natural tendency is going to want to be to bring your shoulders up to your ears, but you don't want to do that. You want to pull your shoulders down and away from your ears. Down and away. Think about bringing them towards your hip bones. But also, 
You want to think about squeezing your shoulder blades together or having them come in together. So it's not just a downward action, it's a down together action. So arms are up high, you're going to bring your shoulders down and together. When I turn, you can see how it affects my chest. It actually lifts my chest. And at the same time, I'm imagining I'm driving the pole into the ground as hard as I can. Come onto your toes. And as a drill, you can just see if you can give yourself a little lift while you're in this position. You don't need to move your feet off the ground, but just try it out. Next thing we're going to practice is the knee hold. So you want to walk your feet in close to the pole. Find that soft spot in your knees. You're going to take a bend, come down to like a squat kind of position. You don't have to go down super low. Hold it for a few seconds. Squeeze those knees together at the same spot. It feels really awkward and it's going to kind of hurt. And then you're going to come back up. So you're going to stand up with your legs. To practice that, move away from the pole. Just take a bend in the knees, stand up with your legs. So when you do this on the pole, you don't want to use your arms to pull yourself up. You want to use your legs. Let's try it again from another angle. I'm going to bring my arms up high, walk my feet in, find the soft spot in the knees, squeeze, hold it for a few seconds, come back up. Next, let's talk about the foot placement when we do this in the air. So right climbing foot brace right foot is going to come across the pole but i'm going to keep my knee and the rest of my leg on that same side then my other leg is going to cross in front at the ankle we're crossing take that bend squeeze at the knees in the same spot hold it hold it hold it then come back up it feels really weird uncross your legs let's try it from another angle okay that right foot, you don't want to bring it in front. You want to bring it behind. Remember that. Okay, make sure you find a soft spot in the knee. Other leg is going to cross in front. Bend, find that soft spot. Hold it. This is how you're going to be in the air. Come back up. Release the feet. All right, so now we're going to talk about this foot hold. So you're going to bring your foot. Opposite side of the pole, knee, soft spot is going to push into the pole. You've got two pressure points on the pole. Bring that leg up as high as you can get it. Arms are up high. Remember, drop the shoulder and then try to pick up the standing leg. Sounds easy, but it's really not. A lot of things happening. We're driving the pole into the ground. The foot is flexed and it's pushing against the pole. Soft spot in the knee is pushing against the pole. Make sure to try both sides. Try to lift that standing leg. Keep all those pressure points activated. Okay, so now we're going to go for this standard climb. So remember, opposite arm to leg. So if you're in your right climbing foot brace, your left hand is up high. Left climbing foot brace, right arm is up high. So we're going to start in the right climbing foot brace. So my left hand is on top. Right foot comes up. Foot is flexed. Picking up the standing leg. Squeezing at the knees. Hands are stacked. I'm going to come back down. Don't jump down. Once you've got the first level mastered, add one to it. But for that, there's going to be a second when your body weight is hanging from your arms. But when you reset your hands, you're going to pull your knees up. You're going to come into your double knee brace, straighten your legs and come down. So one more time, arms are going to come up high. You're going to go for your regular climb, but then you're going to reset your hands up high again. So reset, abdominal crunch, knees up, push back into the double knee brace, squeeze the knees, stand up with your legs. Stack the hands, come down. Good job. Next up, let's talk about this forearm climb. So the forearm climb, you have one arm bent, one arm straight. So the bottom arm, your forearm is going to press into the pole, while your top arm, your straight arm, is going to pull the pole down. So this push-pull action is going to help you. You're going to bring your knees to the pole, same climb in foot brace, and the arms are going to switch, feet are going to stay the same. Come back down. One more time from another angle. Forearm is pushing. Top arm is pulling. And if you want, you can do one foot at a time. You don't have to do both like I did. Stack your hands. Come down. 
Hey, I'm just changing my pole from static to spin. It's an older model, so I have to use this key. All right, so now we're all set for spin pole. And with spin pole, just remember you don't need to use a lot of force because you're going to move fast. Also, the outside leg is going to hook in front of the pole, not behind. So your outside arm is going to be low. It's going to reach low. And your outside leg is going to hook in front of the pole. Gentle push. And then when you climb, like your forearm climb, you can switch hands as you come up. Feet are staying in the same position. If you lean away, you can slow down if you ever find yourself moving too fast. Because if you pull into the pole, you're going to spin really fast. So just remember that little tip. And also, when you're climbing on a spin pole, you can make lots of pretty shapes beforehand. That's really nice. And then when you climb up, you can do things to emphasize your body, like undulations or playing with your arms. You can make it look elegant or however you want. Hang out here in a little inner thigh sit. These are just some things you can play with when you're just starting to climb. And then here, I'm just going to do a little baby cast off and come down. Remember, don't jump down. You can really injure yourself like that. And just one more time, a review of the climb on the spin pole. And, you know, don't jump down. You can always just do something fun. Just play around. You'll be fine. But don't jump. Another little flirty leg position. And you're all set. Try it out. For those of you taking classes, let me know if that was helpful. If you're not taking classes, some places you can practice um, on the train when no one's around, getting on an empty stop or whatever, and just practice when nobody's around. When people are around and you don't care, whatever. Um, Germs though, so wipe that pole down with maybe some sanitizer wipes because and wipe your hands afterward. Also, um, playground, you know, you're just climbing. I'm not saying you got to do anything fresh, just climbing. You can practice there. I'm trying to think of other places where you can find poles, but if you're not taking a class, those are some other places you can practice. Um, if you want to learn about other things that you can practice, if you don't have a pole, let me know. There's some other things you want to learn, let me know. Anything else you want to add, drop it down. Find my socials. I'll see you for the next one. Bye.